Well, it's the next morning. And I went ahead and I uh, infused that little piece of wood. And I did it pretty much the way you saw it in video number two. But before I did that, you probably noticed I put epoxy sealant on the uh, joints and also around the handle. And the reason I did that is because when I first got this uh, vacuum chamber, uh, naturally I tried it out right away and it wouldn't hold vacuum. Well, it would kind of hold it, but it would slowly leak in. And that was before I drilled the holes. So don't go thinking, well, the dummy drilled holes in it. What do you expect, right? No, that was before I drilled the holes. It wouldn't hold vacuum. So I don't know where it was coming in. So I'm just uh, eliminating all the possibilities. That's why I put the sealant around the handles and around the rivets and so on. Uh, the next step will be to make sure that the uh, top of this tank is completely smooth so that the rubber gasket has a nice seal. That'll be the only step. And then if it's still leaking, then it's got to be in the valve system somewhere. Anyway, it's not important because the leak is, is uh, so slight that uh, I'm, I'm monitoring the uh, bubbles coming out of the rosin anyway. So, uh, you know, I'm turning this thing on and off and it's not a big deal that it doesn't hold air or rather hold vacuum perfectly. It's not a big deal. However, uh, I went ahead and I did everything the way you saw in video two. Um, the only thing I did maybe a little bit different is I, I filled this thing up with rosin before I uh, put it in, in the uh, vacuum chamber. And uh, then uh, I just did everything the way you saw. And, and I, I probably didn't wait as long as I should have before I shoved the little piece of wood down into this thing. Um, I probably only waited about 10 minutes because after I shoved it down, I could still see little bubbles coming up, little streams of bubbles coming up out of it. So I probably didn't get it 100% evacuated. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna, it, it's pretty hard right now. Like, uh, it's not sticky or anything. It feels like a piece of glass, actually. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to try another thing. Uh, instead of this for a mold, I went to, uh, to Rona and I bought a 10-foot piece of uh, PVC pipe here. At least I think it's PVC. Uh, it's not black though. Anyway, uh, I bought this pipe and uh, I'm going to see if I can't use the, make uh, tubes that can be used as molds. And um, probably use maybe slightly less of the rosin. And uh, you want to know something interesting? This thing is 10 feet long. I drive a Ford Focus, and you know that this fit in my Ford Focus. I was surprised. I had asked the guys at Rona, could you cut this in half? And the guy says, no, we only cut wood. <laughs> I said, well, it's plastic. He says, no, nope, only wood, and he walked away. Anyway, as it turned out, it didn't matter. Fit in my car. So that'll be the next test. I'm going to see if I can't maybe make uh, uh, use this stuff for, uh, as a mold. Oh, and one more thing. I probably could have used a little less uh, rosin than I did. Uh, it's almost a quarter of an inch deep there, and uh, it didn't really need to be that deep. But I wanted to make sure that the, that the rosin was completely over top of the piece of wood. Otherwise, if it's not, it's going to suck air from the top, and uh, the air will go to the center of the wood instead of the rosin. So... And it's going to be really interesting once I start cutting this down, just to see how deep did the rosin penetrate through the sides uh, of, the, of the wood. Now, mind you, this was pretty dried out wood. Uh, it's kind of punky, so... And, well, that's the whole idea. The whole idea is to, you know, to make punky wood usable. I'm going to have fun with this. I'm going to... I actually, I'm going to turn it into a pen. Uh, not today, but I'll actually do it. Uh, anyway, let's keep going here.
I guess I didn't notice that that little piece of wood had floated up a little bit. So now it's going to make it just a little bit harder to trim because it's at an angle. Well, you're going to have to take my word for it, I guess. Well, maybe I can stick my macro lens on and show you a little bit. But those areas that had the voids that were the most noticeable are completely filled with the Envirotex. Even little tiny pores, the Envirotex has filled them up. See if I can show you. Perhaps if I hold a flashlight at an angle here, I'll be able to get a little bit of a reflection off the Envirotex. Well, I don't know if you could see it or not. I realize that there's no way you're going to be able to see as good with this macro lens as you can with this thing. However, uh, trust me, it, uh, it, it was there. And uh, the uh, Envirotex did penetrate into the cracks that I could see on the surface anyway. Now I, I was thinking, well, if it doesn't go right to the center, uh, no big deal because I'm gonna be drilling the center out anyway for a pen blank, right? So, uh, not a big deal. However, I think I pretty well uh, exhausted this video here. There's not a whole lot more I can show you until I actually turn this down, and I don't wanna do that today. I'll use it on the very first pen that I make. So, uh, watch for it. And in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>